Good morning, class. Good morning, Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Now, that's a lot of difference between that and being overcome and overwhelmed. And the difference is faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world, the Scripture said. And if you're a believer, the Scripture says you've been given a measure of the God kind of faith. Uh, you don't need to pray and beg for faith. Uh, as, as a born-again believer, you're born of that same overcoming spirit with a measure of that overcoming faith. You, ha you have some of it. But then what you do with it determines whether it weakens and languishes or whether it develops and grows. Just like your body, it, it, your spirit needs to be fed. And you have to use your faith if you want it to develop. So get your Bible, get something to make a note with, come on into the classroom with us, and let's, let's do that today. Let's, let's feed it and exercise it. Lord, all of us agree together as touching this, Asking you for the anointing that teaches, reveals, reminds, guides. Asking for answers and help for right now. And we purpose to be doers of it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Look please in um, Hebrews, the third chapter again. We've been talking about uh, a series we're on called Overcoming Unbelief. In Hebrews 3, he said, verse 7, As the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. There's a danger in becoming hard-hearted. And hard-hearted is connected to hard-headed. Stubbornness and a hard heart are linked together. And if you don't uh, when situations come up um, that you need to be corrected or you need to repent, if you don't go the right direction, that's what will happen. You'll become harder and harder. All of us have made mistakes, and it's possible to make a mistake in the future. And when you see that you've missed it, that you've messed up, that you've done something wrong, you'll do one of two things. You'll either humble yourself and be honest, and admit it, and be willing to repent and change. Or you'll harden yourself and deny it and resist. Well, that's how you become hard-hearted, is by hardening yourself and, and not, you know, not admitting something that you know, not repenting when you know you need to change, those kind of things. Well, over months and years and even decades, if you go the wrong direction, instead of repenting and being willing, being teachable, being instructable and willing to change and make an adjustment, instead of doing that, if you harden every time, you'll become hard-hearted over a period of months and years, and that you'll, you'll be one that, that won't listen, one that is stubborn, hard-headed, and that is the kind of thing that he's warning about. He's saying that's what happened to them. We've seen that by Numbers 14, the Lord said, These ten times you have tested me and refused to listen to me. And that was the, the point where they wound up hearing, well, you're, if you're not going to listen, you're going to wind up here in the desert. You're going to die out here in the desert. But that didn't happen the first time or the second or the fourth or the fifth. Or the eighth. How many believe God is merciful? He's gracious. Somebody says, well, why, why the tenth time? You know, why didn't the Lord give them another ten times? Would it have done any good? See, he knows the end from the beginning. 
And he knows when you get to the place where it wouldn't matter if you had a thousand more opportunities, you're going to do the same thing every time. And that's what's, that's what happens with people in the end after all this life too. God, you know, people have a whole lifetime of opportunities to see, are you going to believe? Are you going to trust? Are you going to listen? Or are you not? And God's not going to make you. He's not going to make any of us listen to him or believe him. But what happens over the period of your life, whatever that may be, you demonstrate whether you would ever change or not. And so those who will never change, they have to be separated from the people who will. I mean, you don't want to live in heaven by a bunch of people that are rebellious for eon after eon, do you? Heaven wouldn't be heaven. So only God knows that, though. But make up your mind that you're not going to be hard-hearted and you're not going to be uh, stubborn-headed, but we're going to be tender-hearted. The, the New Testament exhorts us to be, be ye tender-hearted, Ephesians says, forgiving one another. Say it out loud, I choose, I choose to be tender-hearted, to be tender-hearted. not hard-hearted. hard-hearted. You'll find when you're tender-hearted, you, uh, you're not quick to fuss. You're not quick to argue. You're not quick to fight. When you're tender-hearted, you're not quick to get mad. You don't have a quick temper. And you'll find when you're tender-hearted, you're, you're easy to laugh and you're easy to cry. Uh, I've found, you know, the times uh, in my life that I, I realize I've been closer to God than at other times. I'm, I'm quick to laugh, uh, easy to laugh, and quick to cry, quick for tears. You know, you can have happy tears, right? You don't have to be mourning to have tears. But that, that you know, stealing yourself against everything and resisting, you know, can you see the, what makes a hard heart? Resisting, stealing, no, I don't have to listen to you. I don't have to listen to anybody. Well, you don't, but that's going to cost you. That will cost you. And can you see that's what he's warning and cautioning against? Let's read it again. He said, uh, verse 7, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, you don't have to, but if you will, don't harden your hearts. Harden not your hearts like they did in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me. Now, this word tempt can be translated test. Test. You might say testing God. Yep, they did. And many people have since then. Testing God, trying to, trying to put God to the test. Tested him, proved him, saw his works 40 years. He said, I was grieved with that generation. All that refusing to believe, all that stubbornness, all that hard-headed, hard-hearted, that grieves the Lord. He said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. They disqualified themselves from it. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. Now see, we're doing some of that right now. I'm exhorting you. (laughs) We're um, we're exhorting ourselves, right? We're reading this to ourselves. What are we saying? We're not going to do that. We're not going to be hard-hearted. We're not going to do that month after month, year after year. If I need to change, I'm going to change. If I missed it, I'm going to say I missed it, right? Let's pray that out loud. I'm talking about the whole class now. Say it out loud. Father God, God, I'm willing to repent. I know I don't know it all. I know I've made mistakes. I'm willing to be taught, instructed, corrected. I gladly receive your instruction and your help. And I choose. To be tender hearted, trusting you, believing you, yielding to your spirit, 
and your things. Thank you for helping me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You, you mean business with that? You'll see immediate change. You'll see change right away. Uh, sometimes all you got to do is make an adjustment in your heart. Quit being stubborn. Quit being hard-hearted. Just make a little adjustment, and immediately you start seeing things. You start understanding things. Things begin to be clear to you. And you realize it was never God withholding from you. It was just you being a dummy. Not going to be a dummy. What do you, what do you say? Uh, he goes on to say, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceptive. It's, it's much worse than you imagine it, it's going to be. The devil never shows you the whole picture when he's tempting you to do something wrong. He, he don't want you to see the aftermath or you'd go, whoa, I don't want to do that. But uh, sin is violation of light. To him that knows to do good and doesn't do it, it's sin. So either way, if you know to do something and you don't do it, you violated light. If you, if you know you shouldn't do something and you do it, you knew better, you violated light. Those things are sin. And when you know better, but you do it anyway, it results in hardness. Can you see that? Hard, hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Well, we don't want to be hard because hard is dull. You want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and that's a tender heart would be, because you want to hear from Him. Every morning, every noon, every night, you need to hear from Him about what to do, where, when, with whom, how, all the details of life. So uh, walking in the light, and if you do mess up, if you do do something you knew you shouldn't do, immediately repent. And that way, you, you keep your heart tender, even though you made a mistake. He said, for we're made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, and notice he repeats it again, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. Don't harden your heart. So, we want to be looking for that when we read these accounts of their failing the test of faith, you see that they were hardening themselves every time. They were, they were making it harder uh, to make a change for God to get through to them. And people have done that today. People are doing it right now. That's how people get to the place where they were so excited. They came to the Lord. They got saved. But then they... Uh, Maybe through somebody else, the Lord tried to help them or show them a change they needed to make, and they didn't like it. They got upset. They got offended, and then maybe it came up again or it came up again, and they didn't want to hear it. Quit going to church. Quit praying. Quit reading the Word. Hardness of heart. And the problem with that is you get dull enough, no matter God was trying to talk to you, but you're not hearing it. You're not hearing it. And, and 10 years can pass that way. And you imagine you're okay, but you're just getting further and further away from God. And then if you have some kind of crisis hit you, it will dawn on you in a moment what a bad condition you're in. you got no faith, and you're, you, you, know, you hadn't had a decent prayer or a decent spiritual meal in years, and you realize you are in a terrible, terrible condition. But thank God, He's merciful. If you'll run to him and call on him, he'll help you anyway. But again, that would be you stopping with the hardness and humbling yourself and being tenderhearted. Go back with me to Numbers 11 again, please. Numbers 11. This is into the ninth event of these ten where they... Um, they chose not to trust God instead of trusting. And like we said, they're getting harder and harder every time they won't receive correction and instruction, every time they won't listen. It's, uh, 
it's, it's a lot like substance abuse. You know, a lot of people uh, who became, you know, chain smokers, for instance, and they're just doing bad things to their body through packs a day of cigarettes or whatever. The first cigarette they smoked about choked them. You know what I'm saying? They just, they were like, oh man, and you know, it hurt their eyes and their nose and, and, their, and their lungs and whatever, and they're going, uh, you know, but what happened? That's because their lungs, their nose, their throat was tender. Is that right? Tender, sensitive, but you keep doing it, you keep doing it, you will desensitize it. And... Um, you know, your body can get addicted to the chemical and you then, you, you know, you, you come to feel like you really enjoy it and you have to have it. Same thing with hard liquor and things like that. People take a big swig of alcohol and they go, oh, how in the world can anybody drink this? You just, but, you know, you overcome that. You, you push past that and become an alcoholic and just drink, drink, drink every day. Well, uh, we don't want to desensitize. We don't want to push past those. Well, what are we saying? The same thing is true. When you're born again, you're a, you're a baby uh, Christian. You're an infant believer. The scripture said in Peter, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So you're not, when you're born again, you're not born again a fully developed uh, believer, a uh, Christian spirit. You're a baby. You're an infant. And babies are tender. Very tender. Right? And so as a spiritual baby, if you do something wrong, oh man, it'll bother you. It'll bother you. And what you never want to do is ignore that and override that. Because you begin desensitizing. You begin callousing yourself spiritually. You begin hardening your heart. No, when something bothers you, don't ignore it. Immediately go to God. He already knows it. Go to God and repent and say, Lord, that bothered my heart. I'm sorry. I, 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 I confess that I shouldn't have done that. Um, I repent. And if you do that every time, see, that means you were willing to be corrected. You were willing to be instructed or reproved. You were willing to repent. You will maintain that wonderful tenderness, that wonderful sensitivity. Hallelujah. So what's happening to them is then all the previous eight episodes that they were corrected. They were reproved. They should have seen, you know, like on the manna test. He told them, don't save the manna. What did they do? They saved it. And it all went bad by the next morning. Well, how many understand, just right there, you should stay, you should stop and go, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> right? I mean, shouldn't that be obvious? And then he said, on the Sabbath day now, I'm giving you twice as much on the, um, the sixth day, so you don't have to go out on the Sabbath day and work. And so there won't be any on the Sabbath day. Don't go out and look for it. What'd they do? They went out and looked for it. And there was none there. And the Lord was unhappy with them. And rightly so. And Moses was unhappy with them. Now let's just, why am I bringing that up? Should they have stopped right there and said, ooh, we shouldn't have done that. Should they have learned a lesson? And see, this, this has already happened once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. And you'll see here on number nine, they haven't learned a thing. What, what's happening? They are hardening themselves. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to listen. They don't want to repent. They don't want to change. They just want to stay like they are. They want to keep ignoring. They want to keep disobeying. They want to keep doubting and complaining and blaming. They want to just keep doing what they're doing. And God's not going to make them do something different, but it cost them. In this case, it cost them. Think about it. It cost them beautiful homes full of fine furnishings, 
deep water wells, orchards, vineyards, flocks, herds, a beautiful place to raise their families. Can you see this class? They, they couldn't enter in because of their unbelief. It wasn't the giants that kept them out. It wasn't the walled cities. It wasn't their lack of military ability or prowess or training. It was, the Bible said, their unbelief that kept them out. Why are we talking about it? Because he warned us in the New Testament, don't let this happen to you. So say it out loud, I refuse, I refuse. to let unbelief Rob me me. like it robbed them. them. Well, can you see, though, you will have to be teachable, right? And you'll have to learn. If you make a mistake, you don't want to just repeat the same mistake another dozen times. You want to learn from it. And you want to be willing to say, Lord, I'm sorry, I I missed it on that. I should listen to you. Well, of course you should listen to him. We should listen to him every time because he's right every time, (laughs) right? I mean, it's really being a dummy not to listen to him. In Numbers 11, verse 4. Now, they've already, you know, failed at this eight previous times. This is number nine. The mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh, or we'd say meat, to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. Now they're talking about at no cost. Free fish in Egypt. Cucumbers, melons, and leeks, and onions, and garlic. But now our soul is dried away and there's nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Let me read this to you from a Uh, another translation, they said uh, in in the easy to read, they said, uh, we want to eat meat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt. Now fish cost us nothing. We had good vegetables like cucumbers and melons and chives and onions and garlic. And we never eat anything except this manna. What are they doing? They are talking about How good it was as a slave back in Egypt. You know, the scripture says in Ecclesiastes, it said, don't don't say what's the cause that the former days were better than these. That's Ecclesiastes 7.10. Don't say what's the cause that the former days were better than these. Today's English version says, don't ask why were things so much better in the old days, for it's not an intelligent question. It isn't wisdom that leads you to ask this, one says, if you say, why were things better in the old days than they are now? This is a characteristic of unbelief, looking back, looking back. There's a spiritual principle that you, your life moves where your eyes go. If you look back, you're going to go back. If you look down, you're going to go down. If you look ahead, you'll move ahead. If you look up, you'll go up. Remember, Jesus said the light of the body is the eye. And if your eyes are full of light, then your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are full of darkness, what does that mean? He's talking about what you look at spiritually. And so... Even though they are now delivered from slavery, their parents were slaves, their grandparents, their great-grandparents, for 400 years previous, all their people, slaves, they're the first one in this line of, of generations that have ever been free. Free to do what? Whatever you want. Go wherever you want, live wherever you want, whatever profession you want, do what you want to do. And they are treating this like it's nothing. They could have never got their self free. I mean, we saw that, what it took to get them out. It took nothing short of the mighty hand of God in, um, in bringing that kingdom to its knees. Uh, Pharaoh would have never let them go. It took signs and wonders nobody had ever heard of before to get them out. 
And how many think that alone should be enough for you to just be thanking God the rest of your life? Right? And see, that applies to all of us because we were slaves too. Slaves to sin and death. Slaves to the curse. Everybody, before you're born again, you're in bondage. But God has set us free. He has delivered us from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. The law of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Glory to God. Somebody say, I'm free. I'm a free person. Glory to God. I'm free. I'm free. Well, that, that alone is enough to be thankful the rest of your life, the rest of your existence. And instead of that, they're saying, oh, we need to go back. I wish we'd have just stayed completely unappreciative, unthankful, talking about over a few food items. Man, I miss fish. Oh, <laughs> Oh, you remember those, fi- remember those fish fries we had every Thursday? Oh, man. Oh, man. And just completely forget that the only time you could eat your fish is after you'd been worked like a mule for 12 hours <laughs> and come in and fall down in your rags in your hovel. And the only reason you got food is to keep you strong enough to put you back in the field again tomorrow. No freedom, no liberty, nothing to call your own. And yet, the enemy romanticizes. Isn't that right? Oh, how wonderful it was. You know, we sat under the palms by the river and ate fish and had melons. Oh, it was so wonderful. And I'm telling you, God is, I mean, he is getting irritated. The longer he's hearing them say this and cry and feel sorry... Don't they realize right over there is all the fish you'll ever need. Right over there is steak and, and, and beautiful. I mean, they, they brought the uh, grapes and all the produce. That was, I mean, the best stuff you've ever seen is yours. Right over there. All you got to do is keep it together a little bit longer. Well, our time's up again today. Say it out loud. I refuse, I refuse. to be unthankful. be unthankful. I refuse to doubt. I refuse to complain. I refuse to romanticize the past. I'm moving forward. I'm coming up. The best is ahead. In Jesus' name. Praise God. We'll see you back here tomorrow in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.